Hello everyone. Welcome to the series of economics in four minutes. This is Dr. Atman Shah. In this video, I'm going to discuss the concept of Caldor Hicks welfare criterion. You can find more videos on economics, econometrics, SPSS and R studio on my YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe. Let's start with the introduction. The Caldor Hicks criterion is used to evaluate the welfare effects of policy changes. And it is also known as compensation principle. Now, before we understand the Caldor Hicks criterion, we need to uh, uh, understand the idea of Pareto criterion or Pareto optimality. Now, according to Pareto, an economic change which harms no one and makes someone better off indicates an increase in social welfare. That means we have the scope for an improvement. But it fails to answer the question of whether or not to make changes with both gainers and losers. So whether we should move from A to B if we have gainers and losers, this question is not answered by Pareto. Now, let's discuss the assumptions before we understand the Caldor Hicks criterion. The first assumption says that one individual's utility is independent of others. So, individual A's utility is independent of uh, utility of other individuals. Consumer preferences are constant. There is no change in consumer preferences. This principle considers the ordinal approach of utility. That means utilities can be arranged in chronological order or you can give ranks to utility. There is no interpersonal comparison of utility. That means you cannot compare the utility of individual A with utility, utility of individual B or other individuals. And fifth, there is no externality. That means no spillover benefits or spillover cost in the production or consumption of goods and services. So under these assumptions, we can actually examine the Caldor Hicks criterion. Let's understand Caldor criterion first. The Caldor criterion says that policy changes should be made if the gainers could afford to compensate the losers. Thus, if any policy change benefits gainers to such an extent that it is better off even after the payment to losers out of the benefits received, then that change leads to increase in social welfare. So in short, gainers are able to compensate the losers and still be better off. If we have this kind of situation, then the social welfare or the policy change leads to social welfare, higher social welfare. Now, Hicks developed an alternative taste and he considered bribery by losers as opposed to compensation by winners. So, he says that a policy change would be preferable if the losers would not be able to bribe the winners into not undertaking the change. See this example to, to understand the Caldor and Hicks criterion. Suppose we have a move from position A to B due to a policy change. So section X benefits, so they are gainers and section Y uh, loses and therefore uh, those who are there in section Y are losers. Now what is Caldor criterion? Change from A to B should be made if section X can compensate the losses of section Y and still be better off. And Hicks criterion says that change from A to B should be made if section Y would not be able to bribe section X into not undertaking the change. The Caldor criterion is, uh, is useful from the winner's point of view and Hicks criterion can be explained by considering the loser's point of view. So this is the idea of Caldor Hicks criterion. If you find this video useful, kindly like, share, comment and subscribe. Thank you.